this is a nightmare scenario for Turkish President Erdogan because uh, so far he's done a really good job of uh, balancing US and Russia against each other and getting pretty much what he likes. Um, but now he might have to make a binary choice between United States and Russia. This is where things are heading. Turkey is trying to do everything to prevent further escalation of the conflict. Uh, obviously, that has a lot to do with Turkey's view of its neighborhood. Uh, Turkey has already experienced uh, over a dozen, I would say, neighborhood wars in the last uh, two decades. And war means instability. Uh, and more specifically, Turkish President Erdogan, who is uh, running for re-election in 2023, has a problem at home. Uh, the economy in Turkey is in bad shape. Erdogan's base is peeling away. He wants to deliver strong growth. <laughs> Russia is militarily the superior power compared to Turkey, a nuclear power. Also a nemesis for Turkey, going back to the era of Catherine the Great. So Ankara always views Russia as kind of the larger, militarily powerful neighbor to the north and regards all other Black Sea neighbors as uh, indispensable allies that can help Turkey establish a counterbalancing block to Russia. So Turkey will never, in my view, accept Kiev falling under Moscow's thumb, will do everything uh, it can uh, to ensure that Ukraine stands uh, outside of Russian sphere of influence. And I think that really guides Turkey's strategic thinking towards the war. And in my view, therefore, Turkey's position, although publicly is neutral, is strongly pro-Ukraine militarily and in the strategic sense. Turkey's policy is uh, going to be supporting Ukraine militarily and hope that it doesn't get caught in the meantime by Putin while avoiding economic sanctions targeting uh, Russia so that it doesn't get impacted negatively by the fallout. And in the meantime, adopt a public tone of neutrality in its uh, official comments. So I would say these are the three legs of Turkey's, uh, what I call, in quotes, pro-Ukraine neutrality policy. I do not think that we'll see a breakthrough in Antalya between the foreign ministers of Ukraine and Russia meeting there together with their Turkish counterpart, uh, because I think uh, this is really a, a, not a, a moment of uh, Putin uh, to accept humility and step down. But I think this is still quite a significant achievement, achievement for Turkish diplomats. The fact that they can get uh, the foreign ministers of these two parties in brutal conflict sit together uh, around the table in a neutral location. It's a very significant achievement and we could get a short-term ceasefire out of this uh, to allow for civilians to be evacuated. That would be even a bigger accomplishment if that were to happen.